This video has been sponsored by Brilliant.org. More on them later. In a previous video, I talked about how I designed and built this cheap, high-energy capacitor bank for an upcoming project. And in today's video, I'll be showing off what this monster is capable of. As a quick recap, this is my 700 joule solenoid triggered capacitor bank. At maximum charge, this baby can hold up to 4500 volts and produce discharges in the range of several thousand amps. Needless to say, this thing is no joke. Perhaps one of the coolest ways of using this energy is dumping it into a conductive target. Take for example, this strip of aluminum foil. Vaporized in an instant. You see, the amount of energy entering this piece of foil is roughly equivalent to the energy released by detonating a few hundred milligrams of TNT. While this may not sound like a lot, it's clearly enough to evaporate aluminum. Personally though, I feel like the explosive nature of these discharges is captured best by another material. Graphite pencil lead. Nice. Let's see that again in slow motion. To me, that doesn't look too far off from a typical high explosive detonation. So let's see how much of a punch it really packs. Here's a half inch segment of graphite set off underwater. Oh man, this thing has some serious kick. Alright, I've got to amp it up. Here's the same setup, but with a few inches of aluminum foil across the electrodes. Holy crap. In case the scale of this blast wasn't obvious, the ceiling of my garage was hit with a jet of hot water and the plastic jug I used nearly ruptured after jumping a whole foot off the table. Needless to say, I have a newfound respect for these exploding wires. Interestingly enough, this kind of explosive power has led to such setups being used in place of blasting caps. When used like this, it is often referred to as a bridge wire detonator. Bridge wire detonators are quite handy for setting off explosives when precise timing is required. For instance, in nuclear weapons. DBX Labs actually has a whole video dedicated to capacitor based explosive initiation, so if you want to learn more about it, be sure to check him out. I have links to his work in the cards and video description. And if you'd like to learn more about other areas of science like mathematics, chemistry, or engineering, be sure to check out this video's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is an online learning platform with over 60 different courses covering a wide range of topics. I personally recommend the Electricity and Magnetism course, which I found to be a great refresher before taking on this electronics project. Learning with Brilliant is remarkably easy, despite the content being on par with some of my college courses. I personally found the interactive questions sprinkled throughout the course to be super helpful. And if you get a question wrong, you won't be left confused, since Brilliant gives handy explanations for each problem as they present them. With Brilliant, you can learn specific skills like physics or algebra, or simply challenge yourself to become a better thinker, with courses like scientific thinking, which I'm still engaging with. The possibilities are nearly endless with the number of courses they release, and the best part is you can get started for free. Just visit brilliant.org slash labcoats, or click on the link in the video description to sign up. The first 200 of you to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Act fast, these deals are totally worth it. Alright, so far we've put on quite the electrical fireworks show, but we haven't actually gotten a good idea of how destructive these energy pulses really are. To find out, let's wrap an old calculator in some magnet wire and set the whole thing off. Surprisingly, the calculator seems mostly unharmed on the surface. Upon closer inspection, however, something does appear to have happened. The numbers I typed out seem to have erased themselves, so the calculator probably glitched up and reset. This is because the capacitor dumped an incredible amount of current through the copper wire before it exploded. Whenever the explosion occurred, the current was cut off, causing the magnetic field surrounding the coil to rapidly collapse. In other words, we created an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, powerful enough to disrupt our calculator's internal circuits. Pretty impressive, right? I'll be taking advantage of these rapidly rising and falling currents in an upcoming project, when I build YouTube's first flux compression generator, the most powerful non-nuclear EMP device yet known. Make sure you subscribe in time for that video, because trust me, you don't want to miss it. Now, EMPs are great and all, but we all know explosive electrical discharges are the real reason we're all here. So to amp things up, let's try zapping some more interesting targets. Here's a few milliliters of engine starting fluid. Alright, that was a pretty neat little fireball. Going frame by frame, you can see the moment the bank discharged. It honestly looks like I ignited a miniature sun on my tabletop. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. What a fun little toy. This definitely gets my stamp of approval. That fiery display has me wondering though. Could I discharge this bank through fire? I mean, fire is composed of hot gases and plasma, so it might be conductive enough to initiate a sort of avalanche discharge. Well, only one way to find out. Okay, that was pretty awesome. Now let's see how far a discharge can jump when it's traveling through a flame. Here is two inches. Wow, that's actually quite amazing. 
I had no idea fire was so conductive. If I turn the exposure down to its minimum setting on my camera, you can actually see the plasma cloud caused by the discharge. Now that is cool to look at. Okay, time for a grand finale. For this, I really wanted to know how well a really long strand of wire would detonate. So I strung up six feet of copper wire and let her rip. Not bad. It was definitely loud, but I still think we can do better. All right, here's the real grand finale. Six feet of aluminum foil. I'm gonna stand well back for this one. Now that is what I'm talking about. Look at all the pretty sparkles. Yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite projects this year, despite its overall simplicity. So, there you have it. You now know exactly what a 700 joule capacitor bank is capable of. Thank you all very much for watching, I had a great time making this video, and I hope you all learned something in the process. If you like what you see, consider subscribing to my channel, it really helps me out. And if you really want to help support projects like this, consider donating or becoming my patron on Patreon. The links, as always, are down below. A special thanks goes out to all the Labcoats patrons. This channel truly wouldn't be where it is today without them. Stay safe everyone, and I'll catch you next time. Labcoats, out.